Hi everyone, this is Smurthy. Welcome to Q Automation classes. So in the second class or the last session, we have seen different keywords that is available in the Gherkin. So we saw what uh, different keywords like feature, rule, example or scenario, given, when, then and but, right? So today we'll continue on the few more remaining keywords like uh, background, scenario outline, okay? And doc string and data tables, the symbolical keywords also we'll look into it, okay? So let's start. Uh, so the first thing is uh, what exactly is this background right so background is nothing but like uh, when you say like uh, let's say we have a lot of common steps right so those common steps they can be moved into a uh, section called as the background right and uh, uh, I can show you one example okay so let's see okay so here I have okay see so here if you see this example so given user opens browser and user navigates to the application xyz.com so these two steps are common to each of the scenarios we are designing or example we are designing right scenario and examples are uh, alternatively used so uh, for each of these scenarios right so the first scenario is login with valid credentials so in order to log in so user has to open the browser and user has to navigate to the application right so these two are the precondition for this scenario to get executed similarly login with invalid credential right so here also before logging in with the invalid credential the user has to open the browser and user should navigate to the application right so these two steps are common to all the scenarios or the example that is defined in this feature file okay so whenever we have the common statements so instead of repeating them in each of the scenario right what we can do we can mark them into, we can push them into a section called as the background right so if you see here we are seeing background and in the background we are saying given user opens the browser and user navigates to the application xyz.com right so these two steps are common so these two steps are going to get executed for each of the scenario execution before execution of each of the scenario these two steps are going to get executed okay but but what happens steps mentioned in the background is going to get executed before each scenario but after before hook if specified so we'll look into that what is the before hook what is the after hook if before hook is specified right so that will be executed first and then this background section is going to get executed but this background is going to get executed before the each of the scenario specified in that feature file right hope it is clear right so okay so background is placed before the first scenario or the example if you see this is the first scenario or first example so before that we have to place in the background section right so per feature or the rule one set of the background steps can be mentioned you cannot have the multiple background so just write one background and there you write the common steps okay so this is a sample example right so here if we see this feature file there are uh, two scenarios in one scenario we're logging in with the valid credentials right so in login page when uh, in login page user enters valid username as key automation classes and password as classes and clicks on the login button right and then login should be successful and user home page should be displayed this is a positive test case right so here the user is trying to log in with the valid username and password and user is able to see the home page user home page similarly there is another negative scenario validation so user is trying to log in with the invalid credentials so in login page user enters invalid username as qa123 and password as class and clicks on the login button right then invalid login details warning message should be displayed and application should stay on the user login page right so these two uh, scenarios are going to get executed and the common steps opening the browser navigating to the application these are since these are the common steps instead of repeating them in each of the scenario or example we have pushed that into a separate section called as the background right and how the background is going to get executed the background is always going to get executed after before hook and then before each example or scenario that is the important point to remember so that is all about the background section right and similarly uh, we have seen like scenario right so now we can uh, uh, learn one more concept called the scenario outline okay so what exactly is that scenario outline so when you have to run the same scenario multiple times okay i think this is the one okay so when you want to run the same scenario multiple times with a different set of the data right so how we have seen in case of the data provider in our test engine framework right? so we had a set of uh, data in the excel and our test cases are going to read one set of data for one execution and let's say there are 10 set of data the same test case is going to uh, get executed 10 times with those different different set of the data that is mentioned in the excel right so similarly here one interesting concept is that we say that as scenario outline and examples right so here instead of example just consider this as scenario outline okay so feature is login this is scenario outline okay and in the scenario outline we're saying login with the valid credentials right 
and given user opens the browser and navigates to the application when in login page user enters valid username and password if you see we are kind of passing the parameters so in the earlier case if you see we are passing the actual values over here right qa automation classes as the username it is a valid username and classes was the valid password but here what we are saying we are just passing the parameters we are saying in the login page user enters valid username and password okay these are specified uh, enclosed within the angular braces okay and uh, these are considered as the parameters okay so for these two things right so username and uh, password what we are going to do we are going to have the example section right and in the example section if you see the examples and here exactly whatever the uh, name you have given the same thing you have to give right so username the, the similar thing were kept here this is this is nothing but your header right so username and password there are two things are required right to log in we need username and password so we have parameterized username and password so we have given username and password and then so this is first user one password one the user two password two so that means we have given two valid two sets of valid username and password combinations in this example section right so <clears throat> let's say you need uh, three or four things to log in right maybe username password maybe uh, some other information let's say username password your uh, member number something right so here we'll make one more uh, one more uh, parameterization uh, things so here what we'll say user enters valid username and password and member number and here we'll have the three columns one is username one is password one is the member number right and if you see these things should be separated out with the pipe symbol okay and uh, here we have the two set of the data, two set of the information with two, two set of the things we need to pass one is the username and password so there are two columns so first one is user one password one second one is user two and password two so what will happen in this case so let's consider this example as scenario offline so here what will happen you know so this entire scenario right given when then and these four steps are going to get executed first with this first set of the input so when the first time it is going to get executed it will pick the username as user1 and password as pass1 and when the execution finishes then it will again run right because in the example section we are providing the multiple rows so first row of data execution is done and then again this entire four steps is going to get executed or entire scenario offline is going to get executed and here it will take the user2 and password2 this time and enters the username as user2 and password as password2 suppose you have more number of rows so how many number of rows are there those many times it is going to get executed with that set of the data it's kind of the data provider how we have learned in the past right so so that is this scenario outline okay and then we have another thing uh, we discussed about the doc string right so triple quotes right so doc string is usually used for passing a piece of the uh, large piece of the text to a step definition right and uh, in your step definition we don't have to find this text and match it in, in your pattern it will automatically be passed as the last argument to the step definition okay so instead of uh, triple double quotes we can have the triple single quotes also we hardly use this doc string but uh, yeah we'll, we'll look into that later okay and uh, data table right so similarly how you see here right this is a scenario outline example there is one more concept is called as the data table right so what exactly is the data table right so data table also like uh, let's say when user login uh, page user in, in login page user enters valid uh, you say username and password right and after this one you just give this line user one and password like this you give okay so what will happen this username and password will get substituted with that user one and password one so usually in the data table we pass only single line of the information to that particular step definition right to that particular step right so data table is a it is a very basic simple data structure that will allow the user to transform of the gherkin data tables in the cucumber with multiple set of the data right so if when we have the multiple set of data to be passed right from data table then the step is ran multiple times each time with one set of data this is most important so let's understand the difference between the scenario outline and the data table okay so if you see i have uh, navigated to stateflow.org and gherkin editor right so here you can say online okay gherkin editor so click on the first link it will take you to the spec flow uh, you have already seen right so we have uh, cucumber uh, with java so we have spec flow with the c sharp also right so if you click on the get started so you will see here or the editor will come with some sample scenarios and uh, one feature file right with some sample scenarios to be tested right so here i just want to show you the difference between the scenario outline and what is the difference between the scenario outline and the uh, data table right so here if you see we have the scenario outline so add two numbers okay this is uh, by default came actually right so given i have entered the first in the calculator and i have entered second into the calculator right when i press add then result should be result on the screen so here what uh, there are three uh, parameters right one is the first then second and third one is the result right 
so first number second number and result number so first it is giving 50 and 70 so 50 plus 70 is 120 right so first first time this scenario outline is going to get executed with this first set of the data so it will add 50 and 70 and it will validate if the result is 120 or not similarly the second time it will add 30 and 40 and it will verify if sum of 30 and 40 is 70 or not and similarly third time it is going to add 60 plus 30 and it is going to verify if some of them is 90 or not okay so this is the scenario outline so how many number of the uh, lines you have right so those many times that particular scenario is going to get executed right with that set of the data so first time it will get executed with first set of data second time the exact all those four steps are going to get executed with this set of data and third time it is going to get executed with this set of data so now this scenario outline will execute three times okay this is how you write the scenario outline you want to repeat the scenario execution with the multiple set of the data each time okay but what happens in case of data table so a data table so here is a data table example where we are saying given user is logged into the application right so what we need to log into the application we need two things we need a username and we need the password right so i'm saying here so username is uh, admin user and password is admin pass at the rate one two three right so this is how the data table is passed okay so if i you will see that data table in the real uh, real time when we develop the framework right so you can see right how to read this data from this data table right that we'll see in detail okay so that's what i just wanted to show you the difference between the scenario outline and the data table because this is a uh, frequently asked question in the interview so you should uh, be able to answer this one okay so yeah guys that's all to this session if you guys are really enjoying this session so i'll request you to subscribe to my channel and uh, please share this content uh, with your friends and colleagues so that they can also get benefited out of it if you guys are really having any doubt put them in the comment section i'll get back to you as soon as possible and uh, we'll see you in the next class thank you everyone Bye bye